SpaceX just hit their 400th drone ship recovery, while Flight 11 hardware completes cryogenic testing, confirming Musk's October launch window is real. This isn't just another test flight, it's the final V-2 mission designed to prove orbital payload deployment at scale. But here's what NASA hasn't calculated. SpaceX's accelerated timeline puts them 18 months ahead of Artemis. The hardware readiness for Flight 11 reveals something remarkable about SpaceX's manufacturing precision. Both Booster 17 and Ship 38 have successfully completed cryogenic testing, a critical milestone that demonstrates their ability to withstand temperatures of minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit when loaded with liquid methane and oxygen. Think of it like stress testing a water balloon, but instead of water, you're filling it with rocket fuel cold enough to freeze carbon dioxide solid. And here's what few people realize. This testing phase typically reveals structural weaknesses that can take weeks to fix. The fact that both vehicles passed on schedule signals manufacturing quality that's unprecedented in the industry. Why would SpaceX accept this risk of rapid development? The engine installation process on Ship 38 tells the story. As of August 27, engines were being transported to Mega Bay 2 for integration, while Ship 38 had already received its second aft flap a critical component that functions like an airplane's elevator, but must survive temperatures exceeding 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit during re-entry. But there's a detail most people overlook, the booster selection process. While booster 17 completed testing, booster 15 remains a viable alternative with all engines in place. This redundancy isn't accidental. It's SpaceX's insurance policy against unexpected failures. We'll come back to this point later when examining NASA's reaction. The orbital launch mount damage from Flight 10 presents the most revealing engineering challenge. Both the booster quick disconnect and ship quick disconnect systems suffered significant wear. Imagine the stress of repeatedly connecting and disconnecting a garden hose. But the hose carries 1,200 tons of pressurized rocket fuel. Engineers estimate repairs will take approximately one week Yet SpaceX maintains their October timeline. What happens if an engine fails during static fire? Flight 10 experienced exactly this scenario when one central engine shut down shortly after liftoff. While the mission succeeded, Flight 11's objectives demand higher reliability margins. Engineers are implementing design changes to prevent similar shutdowns, though the specific modifications remain proprietary. And here's what's truly noteworthy. Static fire testing involves igniting all 33 Raptor engines simultaneously while the booster remains anchored to the ground. The data collected during these brief burns, typically lasting 10 to 15 seconds, validates engine performance, fuel flow rates, and structural integrity under maximum stress conditions. Ship 38 could undergo one or two of these tests before payload integration, showing SpaceX is prioritizing mission success over pure speed. First, they solved manufacturing consistency. Second, they perfected rapid testing cycles. And most importantly, they've created hardware redundancy that competitors simply cannot match. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is how these technical achievements expose a brutal competitive reality that's shocking NASA leadership. This leads to a remarkable discovery about the current space industry. While SpaceX prepares for their next leap forward, Established players are falling further behind at an alarming rate. Blue Origin's New Shepard mission delays due to avionics issues highlight fundamental engineering challenges that SpaceX solved years ago. And here's what NASA hasn't calculated. Avionics failures represent some of the most serious problems in rocketry. These systems control everything from engine throttling to flight termination. Imagine if your car's computer randomly stopped working while driving 70 miles per hour except rockets travel at 17,500 miles per hour. Blue Origin can't even maintain consistent schedules for suborbital flights that last 10 minutes. But the real story begins when you examine launch frequencies. SpaceX achieved their 108th launch of 2025 by August 27th, putting them on track for over 170 missions this year. This isn't just impressive, it's market domination through operational excellence. Why does this matter for NASA? Every successful Starship flight validates technologies that government contractors haven't even begun testing. 
Flight 11's orbital payload deployment capability, if successful, establishes SpaceX as the only company capable of delivering large payloads to specific orbits at revolutionary costs. The economic implications are staggering. Musk's stated goal of maintaining roughly one mission every two months for Starship creates a sustainable revenue model that could undercut traditional satellite deployment costs by 90%. This pricing pressure forces NASA's traditional contractors to either match SpaceX's capabilities or exit the market entirely. And this is where things get interesting. SpaceX's 400th successful drone ship recovery isn't just a milestone. It's proof of manufacturing consistency at scale that NASA's contractors cannot replicate. Each recovery represents a $90 million booster saved from ocean destruction. Multiply that across 400 missions, and you're looking at $36 billion in hardware that competitors would have thrown away. But there's something most analysts miss about timeline significance. Traditional aerospace programs require 8 to 10 years from concept to first flight. SpaceX developed Starship's current iteration in under four years, while simultaneously maintaining Falcon 9's record-breaking launch cadence. NASA's Artemis program has been in development since 2019 with limited hardware progress. The competitive gap becomes even more brutal when examining international players. Chinese space companies announce ambitious recovery plans but lack the infrastructure investments SpaceX made over the past decade. European space agencies remain focused on traditional expendable rockets that cannot compete economically with reusable systems. As we'll see in the next section, this isn't just about launch capabilities. It's about who controls humanity's access to space for the next generation. And here's why this changes everything about NASA's lunar timeline. The real transformation begins after Flight 11 proves orbital payload deployment at scale, and this is where NASA faces an unprecedented challenge. The Artemis program currently depends on multiple contractors delivering specialized components on complex timelines spanning years. If Starship can reliably transport 100 to 150 tons to lunar orbit in a single mission, it eliminates the need for intricate orbital assembly procedures that add years to mission planning. But there's a calculation most people haven't made. SpaceX's accelerated timeline puts lunar-based construction 18 months ahead of NASA's current projections. While government programs debate budget allocations and contractor selections, SpaceX could be delivering habitat modules, life support systems, and construction equipment to the lunar surface using proven hardware. And here's what few people realize about the implications. NASA leadership is quietly acknowledging they may need to restructure entire program timelines around SpaceX capabilities rather than traditional contractor schedules. This represents the most significant shift in space program management since the Apollo era. What happens if Flight 11 encounters problems? The beauty of SpaceX's approach lies in acceptable failure modes. Even partial success, such as successful payload deployment with a failed landing attempt, advances critical technologies while providing valuable data for Flight 12. NASA's programs, by contrast, cannot afford similar flexibility due to political and budgetary constraints. The December timeline for Flight 12 isn't just ambitious. It's strategically timed to demonstrate operational readiness before NASA's 2026 Artemis milestones. If successful, SpaceX will have proven lunar-capable hardware while NASA's contractors are still conducting ground tests. But there's a detail most analysts overlook about long-term implications. Success breeds expectations. Each Starship milestone raises the bar for what stakeholders consider routine operations. Flight 11's success won't just validate current capabilities. It will create pressure for even more ambitious missions that push NASA to accelerate their own timelines. The most intriguing possibility involves partnership restructuring. Countries lacking indigenous launch capabilities could access space through SpaceX services at costs lower than developing their own programs. This dynamic reshapes geopolitical relationships in space exploration and forces NASA to compete with commercial alternatives for international partnerships. There's uncertainty ahead, particularly regarding regulatory approval for increased launch frequencies. But SpaceX's track record suggests they've already begun addressing these challenges through proactive engagement with regulatory bodies while NASA remains constrained by traditional procurement processes. 
The commercial implications extend beyond government contracts into industries that don't exist yet but could generate trillions in economic value. Private space stations, asteroid mining operations, and Mars colonization efforts all depend on affordable heavy lift capability that only Starship currently promises to deliver. The ultimate question isn't whether Starship will succeed, but how quickly that success forces NASA to abandon decades of traditional contractor relationships in favor of commercial partnerships. Flight 11 represents more than a test mission. It's the moment when space transportation transitions from experimental technology to operational capability that government programs must adapt to rather than control. And that transformation is exactly what will shock NASA leadership, discovering they're no longer setting the pace for American space exploration. This is exactly why Musk's October confirmation represents more than a launch date. It's the moment when NASA realizes they're no longer setting America's space timeline. What this means is that for the first time since Apollo, a commercial company is driving the pace of human space exploration while government agencies adapt to keep up. Flight 11's success positions SpaceX to unlock lunar infrastructure development years ahead of traditional projections, fundamentally reshaping how we approach space as an economic frontier rather than just a destination for flags and footprints. And this is just the beginning. Flight 12's V3 debut in December could validate technologies that make Mars missions economically viable within this decade. The question isn't whether SpaceX will succeed, but how quickly that success transforms space from exclusive government domain to commercial marketplace. How do you think NASA should adapt their strategy when a private company can deliver more payload capacity than their entire contractor network combined? That's the conversation reshaping space policy right now. This is Space Hub, and we dive deep into the breakthroughs that are rewriting the rules of space exploration. If you want more analysis like this, hit subscribe. The space race is accelerating faster than ever, and the next chapter starts with Flight 11's engines lighting up this October.